Welcome back to Bobblehead George. Today, with the help of Periodic Presence, we're going to take a look at POTUS number 15, James Buchanan. On paper, nobody was more qualified to be President of the United States than Lancaster, Pennsylvania's James Buchanan. Buchanan, who was a lawyer by trade, also served as a member of Pennsylvania State Legislature. He was a member of the House of Representatives. He was a senator from Pennsylvania. He was a U.S. minister to Russia during Jackson's administration. He was Secretary of State for President James K. Polk, and then served as our minister to Great Britain under Franklin Pierce. All this before winning the election of 1856 and becoming our 15th president. The topic of slavery dominated the presidential election of 1856. The Democratic Party had turned away from the incumbent Franklin Pierce in favor of James Buchanan. Buchanan and the Democrats favored a popular sovereignty approach to the issue of slavery. In their first presidential election, the new Republican Party and their candidate John C. Fremont stood firmly against the expansion of slavery. This presidential election also included a third party, the American Party, sometimes referred to as the Know Nothings. The Know Nothings nominated former President Millard Fillmore and focused on anti-immigration policies. In this election, James Buchanan won with 176 electoral votes. The number 15 on the top of James Buchanan's cell indicates that he was our 15th president. The years 1857 to 1861 indicate the years that James Buchanan served as our president. James Buchanan's cell is shaded blue, indicating that he was a member of the Democratic Party. The number one in the top right-hand corner of the cell indicates that James Buchanan was elected to the office of the presidency only once. James Buchanan is widely considered by most historians to be one of our nation's worst presidents. He was a man of inaction and did very little to stop our nation from splitting apart over the issue of slavery. In the last months of his presidency, South Carolina seceded, followed by six more southern states. President Buchanan publicly denied the legality of a state's right to secede, but also admitted that he nor the federal government could do anything about it. In March of 1861, James Buchanan retired to his home, Wheatland, in Lancaster County, leaving this issue of slavery and the upcoming tensions in the Civil War to be dealt with by his successor, Abraham Lincoln. If you want to learn more about the presidents, presidential elections, the Constitution, and so much more, please visit our good friends at Periodic Presidents at PeriodicPresidents.com. To make sure you don't miss out on more original history content, click up here. To see the previous president, click down here. We'll see you next time.